In this video, we're going to be learning how to add a loading screen for your website. Now, let me just show you what I've built. So here, when I refresh the page, you'd see we have the text coming in from bottom. They fill up and then again go inside. So it's pretty nice, pretty sweet. And this will enhance your website's look and the user's going to love it. Now, you can use this in almost any kind of website. The only thing that you might need to change is the color of the background and also maybe the color of the text. And that's it. So it's not very difficult to build. It's pretty straightforward and we're gonna be learning this in very simple steps. The source code is in the description so you guys can download that, play with it. And if you're new to the channel, if you haven't subscribed yet, please make sure to subscribe to the channel since we bring in quality content like these every week. So yeah, without any delay, let's get started and let's learn to build this. So here I am in my index.html file wherein I've added the script for the CDN of GSAP and then also I've added the font family Oswald from Google Fonts. So I'm going to be starting off by adding the loader container or basically the loader div within which we're going to have the text which would hold all the different characters of our loader which has hang the tank in each individual spans. Now here if you notice we also have this data text hang which we're going to be using later when we fill in the text with the gradient color so the gradient color won't be actually any background but instead it's going to be a different element all in itself now this won't be an html element we're going to be using a pseudo selector so we're going to be doing that just in a bit so we have our html ready now we're going to be adding the css so instead of making a separate css file i'll be adding everything in the style tag so here inside of the style tag, I'm going to be giving the body the font family of Oswald that we've just added. And then also I'm going to be centering everything using display flex, justify content to center, align items, center, and then we'll give it a background color of this and then would we'll hide everything. And then we're going to target the text. We're going to give it a display flex, font size, and then font weight. Now, you may wonder why do we need a display flex here? The reason for that is because we have everything in different spans. So just to bring in the characters closer to each other. The next thing that we're going to do is add position relative to it. Since we're going to be adding position absolute, later down the line so here would also hide everything since as you've seen in the intro what happens is we have each individual characters coming in from the bottom so we need to hide the characters at certain height and then when we show them up it would seem as if the characters get revealed so here we have that then we target each individual spans and then each individual span would have its property as display inline block and then position to relative and then initially we want the color to be this so we have it added here then we want the line height to be one and then we want everything to be underneath so we have transform y basically translate y to 100 pixels and then here we're going to create a clip path so to have the filling up animation with the gradient color we're going to be using clip path so here we're going to be defining a css variable the way we define it is by adding two hyphens and then specifying the name of the variable so in this case we're going to call it clip path and then here we give the value now the value would be inset 100 percent and then three zeros so basically we want it initially to be completely empty and then filling up the entire thing once that is done, we're going to target the span again, but this time we're going to add a pseudo element, which is the before. So here we first add the content and then here we add the attribute. Now this attribute function takes in the data text, which is defined here, which would make the exact same element as the before element, which we're going to fill up using the clip path and it would seem as if the characters are getting filled up. So there's that. So here we add the data text. So after that is done, we're going to set it as position absolute and we're going to align it exactly same as how we have the different characters. So we want the top and left to be zero and then height and width to be exactly same as the element. So we have it as width 100%, height 100%. And then the background image would be a linear gradient. 
since if you have seen the intro, the color is not a flat color. So we have a bit of gradient. So here we specify the gradient color with 45 degrees and four different shades. So we have the background color done. Now what happens is we don't want a flat color. We want the background color to be shown as the color of the text. So we have the background clip property to text. And then we also add a WebKit just so that it works properly on certain browsers like Chrome and Safari. So we have this WebKit background clip to text, WebKit text fill color to transparent, and then we have the clip path. Now, initially, we want the clip path to be same as the variable that we have defined here. So here in the clip path, we pass the value as the variable that we just defined above, which is var. And then here we add the name of the variable. After that is done, we repeat this again for the WebKit just so that it works well with the browsers. So there's that. Now, so with this, we're done with the CSS. Let's see how it looks. So as of now, we can't see anything on the screen since the background is dark or almost black. Now, once we add the JavaScript, everything would fall into place. We started the JavaScript by first looking for the content loaded event listener. And when the DOM content loads, we want to fire off this function. So in this function, first we wrap each individual characters and then store them in the letters and then also create a DSAP timeline with the name of TL. Then in the TL, we add our three step animation. So the first step is basically getting the characters show up from beneath. The second step is filling them up. And the third step is again, taking them and getting them outside of the screen. So we have these three steps for the animation. Let's add the duration to the first step, add the Y position, and then bring them to their original place. So initially we have them as translate Y 100 pixels. Now we want them to be at their original place. So we set it as Y zero, and then we want delay between each individual characters. And then we want them to stack. So we have this stagger of 0.05, and then we have this ease effect of power to out. And then we add the filling up animation. So the filling up animation is pretty simple. We just change the clip path value. So we change the clip path variable and then set the inset to this time 0% and then all rest other three as zero. And then we give it a duration, a delay of 0 0.3 and then an ease of power one in out. And then we have the last step, which is similar to the first step, but we just add the Y this time to 100 since we want it to again go back to 100 pixel underneath. So we have it as 100. And then we have this stagger of 0 0.05 and then delay of 0 0.5 seconds. And then that's it. So if I were to save it, you'd see that we have this cool animation that happens when we load the page, the characters come in, they fill up and then go in again. So it's pretty nice, pretty smooth. And I think it's pretty good to have some simple, cool animations when you add the loading screens for your website. So yeah, that's it for this video. Hope this video was helpful. Meet you guys in the next video. Till then, bye bye. Take care.